Oh, cool. Magical. All right. Sorry that we're starting uh, a little bit late. We had some technical difficulties, which, which I'll get to uh, <laughs> in a second in the slides. Uh, classic for a presentation. Um, yeah, so hi, uh, I'm Chris. I'm a senior product manager with the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, I'm here with uh, Shimon, who's a lead movement communication specialist. Uh, he's also on the core organizing team of Wikimania, so please thank him and give him some <laughs> appreciation when you get a chance. Um, yeah, he's, he's not coming from very, very far, uh, just a few hours, but he let me know that he is feeling jet lagged nonetheless, <laughs> uh, which is uh, uh, totally understandable. I am coming from a little bit further. I just got in uh, last night in time for the opening ceremony, so I am very jet lagged. Oh, hi, Sudden. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am quite jet lagged. It's 4.30 in the morning for me, so please uh, bear with me. Uh, yeah, so we're here to talk, talk about charts. Uh, which is the successor to graphs. I realize that maybe not everyone in the room knows what any of this means, so we are going to talk about that <laughs> in a second. Uh, but it's a new tool that we're building uh, for data visualization on the wikis. Uh, so <laughs> here's the agenda. Um, it was going to be very short, uh, provide a bit of context. Uh, I was going to do a live demo and then talk about where we're going from here and leave some time for Q&A. Unfortunately, I can't do the live demo. The demo is working. I don't have access to a laptop up here, and there's actually no way to configure that, which is uh, my, my fault for not realizing that that wasn't going to be possible. So I just crammed in a few more slides two minutes ago uh, to try to represent that. But the demo is available. I didn't include a link, but I'll include a link uh, after for you to find that in uh, the session program notes. Uh, or you can find me later. So if there's not enough time for Q&A, because I'm running a little bit behind, I'm going to be at one of the tables in the foyer, I can't remember exactly where that is, but there's going to be a few product and technology tables over the lunch hour starting today through the end of the conference. Uh, I'm going to be there. So if you want to see the demo there uh, on my laptop or I can help you get a setup on yours, uh, then please follow up on that because, yeah, that was going to be a big part of this, but un unfortunately it's not possible. So plans change. That's fine. We can adapt. Uh, yeah, so I can't really talk about the charts part yet without talking first about graphs, and it was in the title anyways, Charts is a Successor to Graphs. Uh, and when I'm talking about graphs, I'm talking about things like this. So these are real life examples uh, of graphs that uh, are pulled from uh, various Wikipedias. Uh, those of you who have been following closely will know that uh, the graph extension, which was used to create this, is not available uh, on production wikis anymore. But you can actually recreate them uh, in a special hacky way uh, on beta. So if you want to know how to do that, also come find me. I can show you. It's a little bit complicated, but you can get these working. So these are real examples that I've been able to pull uh, from just a few weeks ago. And as you can see, these are a way to visualize data on, on the wikis. And what makes this powerful and kind of different from uh, just going into a spreadsheet software and creating something, uploading the image to comments, and then pulling it into an article, I'm talking too fast for transcription, I'm realizing. Uh, what makes this different is that it's editable, like other types of content. So you can edit the configuration of the graph. You can edit the data itself, where the data is coming from, come from an, a number of different data sources, like from Commons or from Wikidata Query Service, or just in line directly uh, in an article. And we lost it. <laughs> but yeah, these, oh, what happened? We're restarting. It's OK. Yes. Too excited about the graphs. Uh, I'll keep talking just to give it. Oh. OK, I'll keep talking anyways in case. If it goes blank, just follow along to, to what I'm saying. Uh, this was uh, exciting enough for editors that hundreds of thousands of graphs were added. Uh, to Wikipedia articles over the roughly 10 years that the extension was available. Uh, and the software that powered the graph extension was uh, pretty capable. So you're able, if you wanted, to create some very complex and very interactive uh, graphs. But what we found is that uh, when looking at the graphs that were actually uh, on, on Wiki, most of them were pretty simple. And they were actually created using a small number of templates uh, that were kind of copy and pasted across different wikis. Uh, and, and those templates generate pretty basic visualizations uh, like the ones that you see here. So let's look at a specific example. 
Uh, again, this is from a real article, the demographics of Estonia article on English Wikipedia. Uh, this is uh, what the graph would look like. Uh, it's a population uh, change over time. This is what the Wikitext code looks like to generate it. So it's using a template called chart. And you can see, I know this is hard to read, but it's OK. Uh, you just need to get the, the gist of it, which is the top half of the slide is configuring the, the graph, and the bottom half is the data that's actually powering uh, this graph here. So you can see that the data is all in line. Uh, maybe this is very familiar for an editor who's constantly editing with these types of templates. For someone just scrolling through this article, maybe making uh, an edit somewhere else, this might be a little bit daunting, kind of a thing that you, you don't want to touch too much. Uh, and yeah, so instead of seeing this right now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the extension is, is no longer available in production wikis. You're going to see something like this if you actually go to that article. Uh, depending on which wiki you're on, this might look a little bit different or it might not show up at all. But yeah, the extension, uh, unfortunately, there was a security vulnerability. It was turned off last year. When we were trying to get the extension enabled again, uh, we discovered that there were some flaws in the design of the extension that made it so that we couldn't uh, get it working to our, our current standards of software security and sustainability. So it's been disabled. Uh, we are going to do something about it, though. So recapping quickly, graphs were a pretty flexible way to visualize data on the wikis. They're editable like other types of content. That's what made them unique. Uh, they could be added uh, on their own, but most of them were added using templates. Uh, and some of them had some interactivity. But most of the, the templated ones were pretty simple on, on Interactivity. And what I mean by that is like hover states or the ability to just highlight one series instead of all the series, stuff like that. OK, so let's talk about charts. So there is uh, a focus this year from the foundation to make Wikipedia a destination for a new generation of readers to discover, engage, and building a lasting connection with encyclopedic content. Uh, and there's a whole session dedicated to that on Saturday, I think a big workshop. So if you're interested in that and what that looks like in the future, then I encourage you to, to go to that workshop. Uh, but we also recognize that graphs were a valuable role in this, and they've been missing. So uh, it's something that we want to bring back and we want to learn from and improve on, uh, and that's where charts come in. So the project is about enhancing encyclopedic content through data visualization, which is a bunch of the stuff that I already showed you with graphs. Uh, but more importantly, it's a, it's a new way to create data visualization uh, on the projects. And this chart project, I'm saying project a lot, uh, is uh, going to span about the first six months of the fiscal year, so running through the end of this calendar year, end of December. Uh, and we want to get to a point where editors will be able to start converting Gra like visualizations that were created with the graph extension and move them over to charts or start creating uh, new charts uh, using the system. Uh, and this slide is very familiar. We're kind of looking at a similar one uh, just a minute ago for graphs. So charts are also a flexible way to visualize data on the wikis. They will also be editable like any other type of content. You'll be able to add them using a parser tag, not a template, and we'll talk about why. Uh, and they'll be interactive ready. And the reason I say that is it won't be very complex uh, interaction uh, from the beginning, but we're designing it in a way that that can be layered in uh, later. And there will still be some basic interactivity like hover states and stuff like that uh, included from the beginning. But we said we also wanted to learn from graphs. Uh, and one of the challenges with graphs is that they were not easy to share across wikis. Uh, because they were mostly created through templates. And actually, a lot of them were had their data inlined in the article. So it's challenging to even share that between articles. So one of our goals is to make them easily shared across wikis, uh, obviously with the security vulnerability being the reason that graphs were turned off. We want charts to be secure by design. Uh, and in making them accessible across different projects, they need to be translatable. And we also think there's an opportunity to have charts meet our current standards for accessibility uh, as well. Here's where I do the demo, <laughs> or not. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I crammed in these slides to, to cover sort of what I was going to cover in the demo. Uh, what I was going to cover was creating a chart uh, and then including it in an article. So I have some screenshots of that instead. But again, like, come find me uh, if you want to see a working demo. There were a bunch of engineers who worked really hard over the last few weeks to get the demo working. And so I'm sorry that we won't be able to show that. 
Okay, so here's an example of what a chart looks like. Looks pretty similar to a graph. Uh, this is the 1993 election polling, uh, Canadian federal election polling. You'll see it's, uh, this, this would be working in, in a live demo. Uh, and you can see uh, we have multiple series. It's a simple line chart. Uh, the, this is the, what we worked on uh, to create a, a quick prototype over the last few weeks to be able to demo something here. Um, ooh, okay. Uh, here's what it looks like uh, to create that graph. And the way you would specify this is actually uh, in the data namespace. Uh, we're going to have these charts live on commons. So the data namespace, you'll be able to create uh, a page with the dot chart extension. And you'll be able to define the chart there and see a preview of it on commons. Uh, oh, let me go back for a second. You'll also be able to specify, there's a hand already. Usually those uh, charts are generated using colloquial regressions. Is it possible to uh, embed it uh, into the code so that it uh, generates in that way? Could you save that question for the end? Yeah, uh, usually when you uh, plot uh, data could, with... Could, could, you, could you save the question for, for the end? Okay. Sorry, yeah, uh, just because I'm, I'm trying to... Thank you, though, but we'll, we'll, we'll get that at the, uh, at the end. So this uh, is what the, the definition looks like on commons. And here's what it would look like to actually embed it uh, in an article. So you would just have this short piece of wiki text that calls the chart from commons, and you would be able to do this from any wiki uh, that is plugged into commons, and it would automatically be available in the language of that wiki, assuming that it was translated properly. Uh, so this, we, we think, is, is a big improvement in being able to have these charts in more places. And if you're an editor who's really interested in creating the charts, there's a place for you to go and do that. And if you're an editor who just wants to enhance an article with a chart, but you don't have the data to build one or the expertise to create one, then you can find one on Commons and just bring it in. So the prototype is working and is pretty cool, but there's still a lot for us to do to get to all the things that I said charts would do. Uh, one of the first things is data filtering. So I, I wasn't able to show what the data set was that I was using, uh, but it's a, a tabular data set from Commons. And right now with the prototype, it's either all or nothing. Everything from the data set uh, or, or nothing at all. And we want to be, to be able to pluck out like specific columns or ranges from a data set to be able to use in a chart so you don't have to keep creating different data sets for specific purposes. Uh, and then customization, uh, those maybe the Canadians in the audience will know that these are not the right colors necessarily for, <laughs> uh, for these political parties. And sometimes color carries meaning, especially when visualizing stuff like this. So the ability to customize the, the chart further and, and amongst uh, other things that, that I'm listening here. One of the things that we're really interested in learning from you all is uh, what type of data you want to visualize and where that data lives. So if you have uh, ideas or suggestions about that, please uh, come talk to me after or mention it in the Q&A. We have some pretty aggressive milestones. So we have our prototype up. We only started working on the project uh, at the beginning of July. Uh, so we're moving pretty quickly. Uh, we're hoping to have a beta deployment this month. We're hoping to be production ready next month. Production ready, not in production, because we're not exactly sure yet when it's going to launch in production, but we want to be ready to do that. These are very quick or like aggressive timelines in Wikimedia development. Uh, the, and then, yeah, for the rest of the time and, and really throughout, we're going to be iterating on the extension itself, the data sources, the different chart types that are available. Uh, and importantly, we want to find a way to make it easy to transition from the graph extension to the chart extension. So we're going to be working on that as well. Here are the people behind the project. Um, we have a really talented group, and I, I just want to thank Rowan, Brooke, and Katie in particular. Like I said, they worked really hard to get a prototype uh, up and running for Wikimania, and unfortunately, we can't demo it right now, but uh, I, I do really thank them for, for their work on that. And yeah, so recapping uh, what we talked about here. So charts will be a more a new sustainable and secure way to visualize data on the wikis. We hope to have a version deployed soon so that you can play with it yourself. 
Uh, and we hope that it's going to be even more successful than graphs already were. Uh, I know we can't do that on our own, and that's really only going to be possible with your help. So I do have a few asks. Please share with us anything that you want to be able to visualize uh, on, on the projects. Uh, very specific examples would be really helpful. If you created anything with the old graph extension, show me that, and we'll try to get it working in beta, look at it together, see if we're going to be able to do the same thing in charts. Uh, talk to me about your data workflow. So the data that's used to power those charts, where does it come from? Where does it live on the projects, if at all? Uh, and then just in general, follow us along uh, on Wiki and on Fabricator. Uh, I'll leave these links. I'll put a third link, which is the actual demo, uh, after. And I think everyone has access to these slides. And that's it. I think we're pretty good for time. OK. <laughs> There were, uh, well, we'll start with this question, because you, you asked it earlier. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll try to do it uh, slowly. OK. Uh, usually, those charts with uh, high frequency data are generated using uh, local regressions. And I have uh, already seen uh, such uh, charts on uh, uh, some pages on the English Wikipedia. OK. Is it possible to generate it, uh, like to embed into the code? Or this is not uh, included in uh, this uh, first stage of development? So what, what is currently doing those regressions, if I can ask? Oh, we, he lost the mic. Oh, I'm just asking a oh, follow-up, yeah. Uh, so, so basically, you uh, run a regression in order to generate uh, the chart line. So okay. is it uh, possible to include uh, such mathematical expressions into the code so that it generates uh, like a smoothened line? Right, OK. So uh, I can't answer that. I'm not totally sure. I think we'd have to look at specific examples. But uh, the way the chart extension is being built is the actual chart type. So like a line chart, uh, a bar chart, those are going to be defined uh, as like standalone pieces within the chart extension. And anyone will be able to add to that code in order to make it do different things, like maybe adding in regression. So that's not really something we're focused on right now, but it's something that could definitely be added. Yeah, so uh, basically, you're doing something which uh, simply plots data in order to create a chart, right? At yeah, and, and there will be basic filtering on the data set, which is what I was mentioning earlier, like being able to pull specific columns or ranges from an existing data set. Right now, what's not in scope is doing additional transformations on the data before rendering it, which I think is what you're asking about. Yeah. OK. OK, thank you. Um, there are so many hands. Someone in the back there. Yeah. Hello. Uh, I am uh, much worried about uh, backward compatibility because there are thousands, if not millions, of pages that were using graphs, and uh, it would be much easier for everyone if uh, the code that was written before to embed graphs into the pages would uh, now work to embed charts because uh, I am not eager to rewrite all those uh, thousands of of uh, graphs that I had added to Wikipedia uh, manually. Are you planning to do something in that direction? Yeah, so when we were first starting the project, we were looking at ways to make it automatically backwards compatible uh, and, and leveraging the existing templates. And we found that that was going to be challenging and not. It's gonna, it would prevent us from meeting some of the goals that we want, like being able to share it across. Uh, projects easily. But we're open to ideas on this, and we are going to look at ways to automatically transition at least some of the graphs that are using the templates. Those templates uh, have pretty set like parameters and expected uh, inputs, so we might be able to automate the transition of some of those two charts. Please come talk to me after and, and show me those the types of graphs that, that you've created, and, and we'll see if we can find a way to automate that. It's, on. it's not on. I can hear you from. Oh, okay. now it's on. Is, uh, can you mention just the intended types of charts that you're yep. thinking about, and is maps among them? Okay, so maps is an interesting one, but uh, in terms of the types, like very basic visualization types, so line charts, bar charts, pie charts, stuff like that, uh, single series or multi series area charts. Uh, maps currently is something that we do want to get around to. Uh, given the time that we have on the project this year, we we may pursue maps, or we may 
delay maps and pursue other data sources instead. Uh, so for now, maps is th the plan, uh, but I can't guarantee that uh, for sure. The software that we're using to power charts does support maps, and, and we are hoping to be able to create that. Uh, anyone, like any technical contributor who wants to add something like maps will be able to do that pretty easily, though. Uh, thank you. You showed an example where uh, the data source is the data namespace in Wikimedia Commons. Yep. Will we be also able to use Wikidata as a data source? So that's one of the things that uh, we want to explore. The graph extension did allow you to plug into WDQS. Uh, and we've already received a lot of feedback that that is potentially something really important. And as I was looking at some of the examples of graphs, a lot of them, like, there are so many airport, like, articles about airports that have uh, passenger data that pull this, I think, from Wikidata. So, uh, th yeah, it's something that we want want to look at, and we're we're wondering if it's maybe more important to focus on supporting something like that uh, over maps. Like, if we had to pick one to focus on in the beginning. Uh, again, like I'm seeing a lot of nodding, so maybe that is the right direction to go into. Um, yeah, it's so it's not something that's baked into the prototype right now. We're designing the extension in a way that that could be plugged in. Uh, pulling from APIs could be plugged in, uh, and it just like there could be various sources uh, that are all used for the same types of charts. Uh, so yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have a question also. You mentioned interactivity. Oh, sorry. No, no. Is it a follow-up? No. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned interactivity. Is it something that you're gonna add later, or will it not happen in this extension? I'm thinking especially, for example, about pie charts. Yeah. If you have like. For the election, 10 parties with like 0, 1% each, yeah. you don't, you cannot read it without interactivity. So again, like the, the software that we're using to power charts uh, does support layering interactivity, pretty um, fancy interactive graphs as well. Uh, to start, it'll be pretty basic, like uh, again, like being able to hover over certain things to get a little tool tip of the data, uh, hopefully being able to drill down into a specific series as well. So if you want to pull out a section of that graph. I, I'd have to look into the spe specific example of like really small percentages in a pie chart, uh, but you'll be able to customize the, the chart in a way that hopefully that's less of an issue. Um, but because it's so early, like we, we just have a prototype right now, I can't guarantee anything. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. I don't know what channel. Uh, I think we'll go there. Oh, sorry. We'll, we'll come to you after, yeah. Um, I was concerned about uh, the uh, re uh, referencing aspect of, of charts. Um, at the moment on the English Wikipedia, I can't use Wikidata. I often can't use Commons. Um, so, And here we're locked into Commons, aren't we? So I, I have to be able to explicitly s provide an English Wikipedia reference for the data or I won't be able to use it, will I be able to do that? That's an interesting question. Um, I'll have to think about that one a, a bit more. So you're, you're saying you need to reference the data set that the chart is using in English Wikipedia. Um, maybe we can talk a, a bit after about the challenges of making that reference work. Maybe we can have it happen automatically. You're saying sometimes you can't use the, the data from Commons, and I'd, I'd want to talk about that a bit more. Yeah. Hi. Um, Hi. So currently, there's like a JSON um, text to to generate the the graph, right? Mm -hmm. Do you plan on having a GUI GUI for for that, so that we don't have to go into the technical tidbits, but you know, interactively in a pop up or something, uh, generate the, the the graph? Yeah. So that's it's a good question. Um, we're not certain we're going to get around to that this year. Uh, it is obviously something that could be added later. Uh, one of the advantages of kind of being in our own namespace on Commons is that we can make the interface specific to charts. Uh, and yeah, having some kind of more visual dialogue and way of configuring things uh, where it's like toggles instead of yes, no, and it, text input boxes and stuff like that would be ideal. But uh, for the very first version, uh, we might not have that. Sorry, we are out of time. We're out we of have time. To, move to the next session. So if you need, you want to continue the talking, you can do it outside. Uh, it's yeah, find find me outside, or again, I'm an hour and a half over the lunch period. Thank you.